Hi, I'm Tina Devine. I am the owner and broker of record of Divine Real Estate and welcome to my channel. In this video, I am going to go over highest and best. I am going to tell you what does highest and best mean, how to win bids, when it's the highest and best situation, and how does highest and best come up. So stay tuned. Highest and best means your highest amount and your best offer. So to the outside world, real estate is sold by the highest number. So whoever offers the seller the highest amount of money, that's who wins the bid. But the reality is bids are won by the highest amount of money and the best terms. So the terms will be something like how fast can you close? What type of payment are you making to purchase the house? Are you getting a loan? Are you paying cash? If you're getting a loan, what type of loan? FHA, VA, conventional? How much is your down payment? Is it 10%? Is it 30%? Um, can you waive any of the contingencies? A contingency is a condition or a clause that has to be met in order for the transaction to close. So a contingency will be a home inspection or an appraisal. And when a house goes through an appraisal, and especially when there's a mortgage company involved, the house has to appraise for the offer price. Contingencies kind of hinder a transaction depending on the buyers. You know, if you have a cash buyer, a cash buyer can waive all contingencies and a cash buyer can typically close faster than someone who's getting a mortgage. Because when a person is getting a mortgage to buy a house, the mortgage company or the lender is a third party involved in the transaction and that third party has some say in the transaction, which can delay it from closing. Now a seller, a seller typically wants the deal to close as fast as possible because they want to stop paying what what's called in the industry is holding costs. So the longer a seller holds on to a property, the more a seller has to pay for that property. If it's the winter time, they may have to pay heat. They may have to pay, um, they will have to pay property taxes. They have to pay insurance. If there's a mortgage, they still have to pay their mortgage while the house is going through the process of being sold to someone else. So the faster a seller can sell a house, the faster they can get out of that debt for that particular property. So that's why usually cash deals are more favorable to a seller because they can close faster and they don't have any contingencies. Highest and best comes up when there are multiple offers. So let's say there's an open house on a Sunday on a particular property and 30, 40 people come out to that open house. More than likely that seller is going to receive multiple offers starting on Monday. So once that seller receives multiple offers, the seller can take an option to just choose one of the offers that they received, or they can say, um, or they can say, I want the highest and best offer by Wednesday at 5 p.m. So then everyone who has submitted an offer has an opportunity to then increase their offer or change their terms and then resubmit the offer to the seller and have it to them by Wednesday at 5 p.m. If you have already submitted an offer, you don't have to change your offer. If you are satisfied with the offer that you submitted, you can leave it as is and then just wait and see if your offer is chosen on Wednesday or Thursday whenever the seller decides to um, choose an offer. So how do you win bids when it's a multiple offer situation and the seller is asking for the highest and best? Number one, it's an oldie, but it's a goodie. And that is to write a letter. This works particularly well when the seller has some, some sentimental attachment to the home. Maybe the seller raised their family in the home and you have a family that you're looking to raise in the home. You can send a letter along with your offer stating that you love the house or you think the house is perfect for you and your family and you're looking to lay down roots in that particular town, in that community, and you want to raise your children in the home the same way the seller has raised their children in the home. 
it doesn't always work, but it has worked for a lot of agents. It has worked for me multiple times and multiple buyers. We were able to win a multiple offer situation. You know, something like a simple letter can tip the scales in your favor with a particular seller. Doesn't work with all sellers, but it's worth the try. If it's an investor who is selling a property, it may not work that well because the investor may be in, may have a monetary investment in the property and they may need to get the highest amount of money out, highest amount of money from a buyer in order for them to walk away feeling satisfied with the transaction. Number two, you can offer more money down. So let's say you submitted your offer and you're at the top of your budget, you can't go any higher, but what you can do is you can, um, you can submit your offer with a higher down payment. So let's say the house is 350,000 and your down payment is $10,000. You can submit your offer with the full 10,000 down payment. It shows the seller that you are very serious about the transaction and you're giving your full down payment up front. Whereas the other buyers may be submitting offers with just a $1,000 deposit. So your $10,000 is going to weigh a little bit heavier than someone submitting an offer at the same price with just a thousand dollar down payment. Number three, you can waive contingencies. Now, if you are a VA buyer um, or a FHA buyer, you are not in a position where you can waive any contingencies because you are using government backed loans and they will require an appraisal and you do have to have a home inspection done on the property. But if you are a conventional buyer with a high down payment or if you are a cash buyer, you can waive the contingencies, which works in the favor of the seller because you know the seller can sell the house and as its condition they don't have to go through a home inspection they don't even have to go through an appraisal and in a multiple offer situation where people are submitting high offers the house may not appraise for what a buyer is willing to submit an offer on but if you're waiving that contingency the seller can sell the house at a high price and not worry about the house appraising Last but not least, you can offer a quick closing. Sellers typically are looking to get out of a house as soon as possible so that they can minimize how much money they're spending on a particular property that they're selling. So if you are a cash buyer or even FHA buyers or VA buyer, you can offer to close in 30 days. If you are a cash buyer, you can offer to close in maybe 21 days or 28 days. Um, to entice the seller to choose your offer, which is which will definitely sweeten your offer with the seller because then they can get out of the house much faster and minimize how much money that they're spending on the home every month. Thank you for watching my video. If you have any comments, concerns, or questions, definitely reach out to me. If you are in need of a real estate agent, I am always here and available to help. Thank you and please like, comment and subscribe. I am trying to get at least a thousand subscribers, but thanks anyway and I'll talk to you soon.